Well, I wish uh, state capture hadn't happened. But I mean, under the past few years, as the Minister of Public Enterprises, I mean, are there things that you wish you could have done? Yeah, I wish that the National Prosecuting Authority had locked up more people who were guilty of uh, damaging the organization because there are still individuals who are interfering and uh, they need to be dealt with. Still to this day within ESCOM? Yes. So then how, how can you confidently say that things will change if there is still mismanagement that is happening? Well, the balance is, is, is swinging towards the good people. Mm. Many people, though, are looking at the economy, it's stagnated, and your role in particular has been focused on state-owned enterprises, right? And we've seen those really, I mean, as, as one person said, deteriorate over the past few years uh, under the ANC. I mean, how do you respond then to the criticism from people who say that and look at the economy and, and use that as evidence? No, there was a period, uh, which we very frank about, when we had what we call state capture in right. South Africa where people from within, the individuals from within the ANC uh, engaged in all kinds of corruption and they decimated these organizations. In the last five or six years under President Ramaphosa, our task has been to recover these institutions, to rebuild them, to make them a vital part of our economy again. And that's the work that we've been doing. But they're not. He intend appointed the smooth-talking and dictatorial Pravin Gordon as Minister of Public Enterprises. The less I say about Pravin Gordon, the better. As you see, Chairperson, despite his smooth-talking, public enterprises are failing, and it appears that they are on a course to be sold to private interests. Security is very important with this next administration. Should SAA's privatization be Number one, should it be ESCOM? Should it, I mean, what would you say? Well, there's no privatization. It's the involvement of the private sector. Mm -hmm. So on the ESCOM side, you already have the private sector on the generation side. And as I pointed out, once the transmission side takes off the ground, you will have the private sector contributing at that level as well. Uh, but ESCOM as an entity will still remain 100% uh, state-owned. Uh, so there's some creative financing and structuring that will take place as we go forward. Similarly, on the SAA side, we're looking for equity partnerships. Now, the previous deal was a 51-49% deal. Uh, the future administration will uh, reevaluate that and see what's in the best interest of both SAA and, and the partner that we actually are going on to. What we have is an indication of flexibility and the part of government that we go through. Mm. And, and are you optimistic that that will go through? Yes, you have to be optimistic mm. in South Africa. Yeah, and I wonder, uh, Minister, I mean, you're talking very positively uh, about uh, the past few years uh, of being public minister, public enterprises minister, but, but the numbers are not showing up in the economy, right? And investors are waiting to see something to stimulate this economy. I mean, when are, are some of these changes that you're mentioning going to actually show up uh, in terms of economic growth in, in South Africa? <coughs> well, I think in that, like most economies, uh, you've got to get the investment climate right, which we are beginning to do. Uh, the investment conferences that the president has been convening have always been moving in the positive direction in terms of numbers. So increasing investment in infrastructure, uh, in uh, industrialization, and uh, supporting uh, black industrialists on the one hand, but also I think the key area of growth in the future is gonna be support to medium-sized businesses in South Africa. Because historically, small and medium-sized businesses were not allowed to grow. In, in, under the apartheid system. And so what we have is a highly concentrated economy and uh, new ways have to be found to get more people uh, economically uh, active, but also make the economy a much more inclusive one as, as, we, as we go forward. But secondly, uh, I think from a global point of view, 
there needs to be a different take on the African continent more generally, including its biggest economy, which is South Africa. In other words, uh, just take off those skeptical glasses and uh, look at the opportunities uh, that are here, not just from a point of view of exploiting natural resources, but also the potential uh, to grow in many other areas. And uh, where both sides can emerge with a win-win uh, outcome. Mm -hmm. So you think this is an investable uh, account also? Well, it is on the one hand, and on the other hand, as you know, there's a lot of noise around in the global economy, lots of uncertainty. Geopolitics is also, I think, introducing a, a complexity you know, in the global environment, but uh, also uh, on the African continent as well. So it's within that mix that I think business has to find uh, the courage on the one hand, uh, but also uh, the level of optimism. How do we then save these institutions? Um, because when you made this comment around the mice that is running from methane, that's when we had seen um, the exodus of leaders from ESCOM, from Transnet as well, your colleague Previn Godan. No, there was no exodus in, in ESCOM. Um, well, yeah, there was the board chairperson who, who had yes. resigned. But uh, I suppose I say exodus because the previous board chair, um, I mean, the previous uh, CEO left. Um, there are many leaders at ESCOM who have just been leaving. Yes. Yeah, we've had so many CEOs of ESCOM over the last 10 years. Yes. Um, and then you look at Transnet, the CEO leaves. Um, this, was it the CFO? There were other executives that were leaving as well. Yes. I mean, there's no sustain, there's no stability there. What, what's the issue? Uh, do you think your colleague is just not getting the right people? My primary responsibility is on a line minister, mm. of course. So he must take responsibility. Yes, he's a line minister. That is where the basic line uh, responsibility is. What do you think is not getting right? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what I'm told. And yeah. I've interviewed many of these people that have left these institutions. I recently had the, um, the former board of ESCOM chairperson. Uh, what's his name? I forget. Umpo. Umpo. Um, before that, I had the former board chair of ESCOM, Professor Malika Purumakhova. The common thing that they raise about your colleague is that there's interference. Then, why don't you invite my colleague here? I've been trying.